Guys, I've got another idea to share with you. This is my double E anchor sling. It's a heavy duty rigging tool designed to be able to stretch some extra length out of your three quarter inch bull ropes when you're doing heavy rigging. The idea is to bring the anchor point, there it is, to the bull rope, not waste the bull rope going across the landscape to the anchor. And once you've anchored the bull rope, you fill in with all that adorable half inch stable braid that sits in the bag on a heavy job because it won't run with the big dogs. The double E sling lets you configure that stable braid, the half inch line, in an extensible and equalizing configuration that lets the half inch line punch way above its weight class. Now you're talking about four strands of 10,000 pound line and you're working with 40,000 pound MBS as a rigging line. Okay guys, let's get into this a little bit. I'll uh, talk to you about the hardware, the cordage and the splicing and then um, we'll see, at the end of the video I'll show you how to lace it up quickly and easily. Um, I think I hear somebody in YouTube saying, hey, he just poached Nick's idea f about the uh, thunder sling. And that's exactly what I did. And um, not only that, uh, Nick helped me with it. Nick, is the, Nick Bonner is the general manager of treestuff.com. About a year ago, he came up with the Thunder Sling. If you want to learn about this, uh, check it out uh, on the website, treestuff.com. Nick's insight was to use the slings as uh, friction devices, and he built an aerial brake that an arborist can control a load from either in the tree or down below. Now, Obviously, I poach right off of the thunder sling to, to get to this. And these things look uh, surprisingly similar, but holy smokes, are they worlds apart in terms of their application regimes. And um, what I'm going to do now is describe to you the build out of the E sling, and I'm going to leave the, the thunder sling here to compare it against. And I am not in any way being critical of the Thunder Sling. This is exactly right for its application. It's small, it's compact, it's, it's vertically easy to use while you're in the tree compared to something that's heavy and long and clunky on the ground. Um, they got the Thunder Sling exactly right. So I'm not being critical of it as I make the comparison. What I'm trying to avoid is the possibility that somebody will get a thunder sling and watch this video and then lace up the thunder sling thinking that they could make it work um, uh, to uh, extend their bull ropes. That would be a major mistake and I'm going to try to teach you why that's true, why, why there is such a world of difference between the application regime of these two devices. Okay, so let's start with the hardware. That's simple. It's the ABR rigging thimbles, four number two thimbles in the Thunder Sling, and four number two uh, thimbles in the uh, E Sling. Um, if you've seen my early work on YouTube, you're probably asking, hey, why aren't they black? Um, I was very early and very enthusiastic uh, to the X rings and uh, credit to David Driver for bringing the X-Rings into the industry. Um, from the very beginning, I thought these were a very important, uh, powerful uh, tool. So why is everything silver here instead of black? And the answer is simple. I simply could not build the E-Sling with X-Rings. Um, what I didn't completely appreciate until I got into this project was that the ABR thimbles are more generously sized in the groove dimension. They can accommodate arborist ropes um, and I simply could not get the X-ring 
to accept the cordage I wanted to use. I, I just simply had no, no uh, choice, so I'm on the ABR uh, rings here. Um, I'm not saying one's better than the other. What I am saying is don't make the same mistake I made, kind of assuming that you know, small, medium, and large, they're all the same thing, and uh, they're not the same thing. They are significantly different, and it turns out that that difference was uh, the difference between success and failure in my application. So I'm just saying it's worth your time to check out how these dimensions are going to affect what, um, what you're building. Okay, um, so the ABR uh, rings, the four of them, and then the Eastling has uh, the number three uh, large uh, ABR ring. What's that all about? Well, the first thing's pretty obvious. Um, it's acting as a pulley, and that pulley uh, splits the rigging forces between two ground anchors, equalizes the force between the two anchors, and it also does something else which is hugely important. The, this one element by itself actually does more than half of all the work of the entire sling. What's up with that? Well, take a look at this. The two strands that are going through the big ring as a thimble carry half the load. And they transfer that load to the main line of the sling right to the T-Rex with the ring acting as a thimble, not as a connecting device, not as a pulley, and not as a friction device. It's acting as a thimble to transfer half the load directly to the T-Rex. That's very significant. That means that the two strands at this level, even at the bottom of the sling here, are only carrying 25 percent of the load. And as you go up the Christmas tree, friction transfers that load over to the, uh, to the uh, uh, rings, and but you wind up being able, for the same number of friction elements, you wind up being able to carry twice the amount of weight. Um, so that's, um, that's very significant, and the uh, thunder sling, you can't use this, uh, you can't use the end ring as a pulley here, because there's just simply not enough um, space to accommodate the four, uh, the four strands. So here, the geometry of the rings is terribly important. And then also the cordage is important, okay? The T-Rex that I'm using is 7 eighths inch and single-ended strength on that is 32,000 pounds. Big stuff. But this is a double-ended configuration. These are two class one eye splices and this whole thing is basically an eye-to-eye -eye, uh, basket. And so, at a theoretical level, um, these sections are good for 64,000 pounds of, of uh, MBS in the double-ended configuration. Compare that to the cordage here, we've got half-inch 10X, perfectly adequate for the application, 13,000 pounds in a single-ended configuration. That's really uh, big. Uh, 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 the, the difference between the two is really big. That's a factor of six to one. It's even bigger than that because of the spacing between these pulleys, um, uh, between these uh, uh, rings. What do you mean? Well, this is not sloppy spicing. Uh, this this is spaced out like this for a reason. In fact, these are the classic locked Brummels, and so you know this is a three cross, two, 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 and three cross. And the reason they're in there is to hold the rings apart and give the fibers the opportunity to move off of these very severe rigging angles and instead move into a very much stronger orientation to the 
longitudinal uh, uh, pull of the, uh, of the sling. So these fibers are oriented this way and these fibers are oriented this way. When you take all this together, the single-ended nature versus the double-ended nature, the pulley, the cordage, the spacing here, this all adds up to a very different application regime. And um, what I don't want anybody to do is to just look at this and say, this is going to do the same thing as this. The e-sling won't do what the thunder sling does, and the thunder sling won't do what the e-sling does. I don't care if the four rings are the same. Um, <laughs> when you're working with thimbles, um, it's all in the cordage and in the geometry. Um, normally, we're used to thinking with carabiners and pulleys and so on, the, the hardware determines the strength characteristic. But when you're working with thimbles, it's a very different game. And these, these two guys are very, very different animals. So how strong is this thing? The answer is, I don't know. I haven't tested it to destruction. I have proof tested it to 25,000 pounds with the half-inch stable braid. And at that level, I can break virtually any class one um, three-quarter inch uh, bull rope. Um, uh, stable braid breaks at uh, 20,000, 10x breaks at uh, 25,000. I have absolutely no desire to be around a test where I'm breaking three-quarter inch 10x. It's just not on my bucket list. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to test this uh, any higher, um, but I am going to have the confidence that uh, if I ever did want to break 10x, uh, I could do it with this, with this rig. Okay, so much for the, uh, the splicing, the uh, components. Um, let's break this down and let me show you how to uh, thread it up quickly when you need to uh, lace it up for an application. Okay guys, here's our little uh, rigging scenario. We're going to pull a stump out with a mechanical advantage system. That system is going to be reeved with a 3 quarter inch 10x bull rope and I want to put a ground anchor, a heavy ground anchor, right here uh, in order to preserve as much of the 10x as tackle between the blocks so I don't short stroke the pulleys. I haven't got a ground anchor here so I'm going to use the extendable equalizing sling to bring the ground anchor to me and as I look out over the landscape here I see two mid-sized trees. Here, here's a perfectly nice uh, galvanized tree and let's say that's 50 feet away from the bull rope. And here's a nice brass tree, and let's say that's 25 feet away from the bull rope. They don't have to be equal. The, the sling will take care of equalizing that. And here's a bag full of half-inch uh, stable braid, and somehow the sling is going to work some magic and make that uh, useful in a heavy rigging situation. So let's, um, let's lace it up. Um, the uh, e-sling is not midline attachable, but I'm going to show you a technique that lets you lace it all together without, uh, with only using one end of the line. So that means the, the intermediate rope can stay in the bag and uh, you only need to deploy as much as you need for the hookup. Um, we're going to skip the first two rings. I'm going to come back to that and show you how to use the rings to do a soft lock off on running rope. We come to the third ring and start uh, lacing up and we're going to do a front to back, front to back, left to right uh, pattern here throughout. So we take our first three rings and take a walk around our first ground anchor. And there we are around the galvanized tree and we come back and go through the uh, pulley ring the same way we came out. Take another little walk, this time around the brass tree, and come back to the sling. And this time we want to pull through maybe uh, eight extra feet so we can complete the lace up and tie a safety knot. Um, let's come back into the ring the uh, pulley ring, the same way we went out, 
and we continue the left, right, front, back uh, pattern. You'll get used to seeing this as a uh, as a nice uh, sort of a double helix um, when uh, uh, when you uh, do the pattern right. And now we've got the first three rings laced up properly, and we need to secure the running rope up here. And to do that, uh, I'm going to show you an idea I'm calling the mechanical munter. Um, I take the line coming out of the bag, pinch off a small bite, shove it through the ring, shove it through the number two ring, and then pull the bitter end, pull the other strand right through that bite. And you'll see something that looks a lot like a munter hitch that you would form on a carabiner. But in this case, this is like a munter on steroids because normally you have a bite around a standing line and the more tension you put into that line, the more friction comes into the munter and it controls the running rope. In this case, as, this, as tension comes into the line, this bite tries to withdraw into the rigging ring and that vortex shape acts as an inclined plane or a ramp um, and that's a mechanical advantage system so you you have a situation where the clamping force is increasing faster than the tension and you have a tremendous uh, force uh, pinching off the rope and uh, and holding it um, you, you, you just continue that same uh, pattern except on the number one uh, ring we're going to put the bitter end through not a bite but the bitter end through so you can capture the other strand and come back out and now you've got your two uh, mechanical munchers formed and notice that they look like they're on the same side of the rig but that's because of your helix uh, arrangement here this munter needs to be on strand A, this munter needs to be on strand B. Don't get yourself confused and accidentally leave, uh, put them both on the same, um, put them both on the same strand. You don't want to do that. Now, in normal operation, the, the rig will pre uh, present no tension at all um, in this, um, uh, in the line at this point. All the load will have been transferred to the big ring and up the Christmas tree here and this will see no tension at all. But you still should tie a safety knot and you can, there are any number of things you could do here. I like to throw a couple of wraps around uh, the sling and then just do uh, a marlin spike hitch or a slip knot facing against the uh, against the rig and cover that with a half hitch and now you've got a safety situation that if anything it does get away from you uh, this will simply jam the uh, rigging ring and uh, keep your rig together so that's it that's the extendable equalizing anchor sling thanks for watching